where were the elves and dwarves during the War of the Ring? Those who have read The Lord of the Rings will notice that the War of the Ring, the conflict that took place at the end of the Third Age, is told to us from the perspective of certain figures within the Company of the Ring, or Fellowship. As the story progresses, we follow different paths and journeys until the companions are reunited following the destruction of Sauron's Master Ring, which itself isn't technically the end of the War of the Ring, but that's not important here. What is important is that you may ask yourself, where are all the elves? Where are all the dwarves? What's happening elsewhere in Middle-earth? And why aren't we told in the Lord of the Rings? I hope to answer these questions in this video. These are common questions, asked mostly I assume by those who have not yet read the works of Tolkien, but also by those who possibly put down the Lord of the Rings following the final chapter, The Grey Havens, without reading on into the appendices. The appendices at the end of a book are of course by definition supplementary materials, but for the Lord of the Rings they are important, important enough to Tolkien that their inclusion delayed the release of The Return of the King, back when the novel was split into three volumes due to post-war paper shortages. Not all information that Tolkien provided can fit into a narrative. It's one reason I so often quote from letters and other supplementary materials, but the information is still interesting and important, still worthy of reading and adding depth and backstory to Middle-earth, be it the history of Gondor, Numenor, Dwarves, Rohan, or Aragorn and Arwen, calendars, family trees, pronunciations and languages. Tolkien's mythology is more than the narrative, and the appendices of the Lord of the Rings are a testament to the depth of his work. It is here where we do find our answers to these questions. Both the population of dwarves and elves had been dwindling for a long time in Middle-earth, but for different reasons. If we start with the dwarves, there was the small matter of the War of the Dwarves and Orcs, a fierce war fought in the dark places under the earth, following the brutal murder of Thror by the orc Azog. Thror being the former king under the mountain, before Smaug the dragon sacked Erebor, an heir of Durin himself. Their population drastically decreased during this campaign, despite their victory. Gimli, who would join the Company of the Ring, and his father, Gloin, became a part of the Council of Elrond when they showed up in Imladris, seeking Elrond's advice regarding the colony of Balin and Moria, the attempt to return these dwarves to their ancestral home, and a messenger bringing evil tidings at Dain Ironfoot's gate, seeking information on Bilbo Baggins. Gimli was a dwarf that we see play a role in the struggle against Sauron during the story. As for the rest of the dwarves, they were dwelling in their own lands during the War of the Ring, but they were not idle. Sauron's empire was vast, his reach even greater. The battles we witness during the Lord of the Rings are but a part of the display of his militaristic might. There are other battles taking place outside of the immediate story we are being told, and the dwarves were fighting Sauron in far off places, while we witness our heroes holding back the tide. Imagine that dwarves could have their own version of the Red Book of Westmarch, their own legends and tales of their struggles against the Dark Lord of Mordor. The Tale of Years, as part of Appendix B, tells us that while the great armies of Sauron besieged Minas Tirith, as we read in The Return of the King, Sauron's allies from the east, who had long threatened the borders of King Brand, King of Dale and grandson of the legendary Bard the Bowman, had crossed the river Carnan and driven them back to Dale. Dwarves who had returned to Erebor following the events of The Hobbit, where the lonely mountain was reclaimed, were able to provide aid and a battle was fought at the feet of the lonely mountain, known as the Battle of Dale. Dwarves, like all others, did suffer in the War of the Ring, as men lost a great king in Theoden of Rohan to the south, the dwarves lost King Dain Ironfoot, and the men of Dale lost King Brand in fighting alongside the dwarves, giving Easterlings their victory, despite being unable to take the gate. Gondor could send no aid, everyone was stretched against the might of Sauron. In Erebor they withheld the siege until news came of the great victories in the south, filling Sauron's northern forces with dismay. 
those besieged came forth and routed them, and the remnant fled back into the east. Bard II became king of Dale, Thorin III, Stonehelm, became king under the mountain, and both sent ambassadors to the crowning of Aragorn as King Elisar, their realms lasting in friendship with his, under the crown and protection of the King of the West. Gandalf then tells us in Durin's folk that when you think of the great battle of the Pelennor, do not forget the battles in Dale and the valour of Durin's folk. Think of what might have been. Dragonfire and savage swords in Eriador, Knight in Rivendell, there might be no queen in Gondor. We might now hope to return from the victory here only to ruin and ash. The idea that war was brewing across Middle-earth is apparent to us as early as the second chapter of the Fellowship of the Ring, when we are told that dwarves were on the road in unusual numbers, strange dwarves of strange countries seeking refuge in the west, while some spoke in whispers of the enemy and Mordor. When it comes to the Council of Elrond, we also have to remember that the dwarves and others were not arriving in Rivendell specifically for a council. The council was held because chance saw so many from different kindreds and lands arriving at this seemingly pivotal moment in time. But the threat of Mordor was growing too large for anyone to deal with on their own. Boromir of Gondor, telling us that prophecy led him there, a dream shared with his brother about a broken sword and a halfling. The elf Legolas of Mirkwood, speaking of evil forces returning from where they had been driven out after the necromancer, Sauron, had left that land. A reminder that events were happening away from those we are following on this journey, a conflict across Middle-earth. When it comes to the elves, they too had their own borders to protect and battles to fight. Their population had been dwindling with so many leaving the shores of Middle-earth to sail west, the time of the elves in this land drawing to a close. Gildor and Glorian, the first elf we meet in the story, all but confirms this to Frodo when he says that the troubles of Middle-earth are no longer his concern. But the elves remaining in Middle-earth want what is best for it, a home to many who never sailed to Aman before the rising of the sun and moon. We are told that these elves are in conflict with Sauron, but again, we don't witness these battles in the story. With the elves of Lothlorien, they were assaulted three times in quick succession. After the fall of the Dark Tower and the passing of Sauron, the shadow was lifted from the hearts of all who opposed him, but fear and despair fell upon his servants and allies. Three times Lorien had been assailed from Dol Guldur, but besides the valour of the elven people of that land, the power that dwelt there was too great for any to overcome unless Sauron had come there himself. The woods on the borders had been grievously harmed, but the passing of the shadow through Sauron's defeat in Mordor allowed Celeborn to come forth with a host of Lorien across the Anduin. Dol Guldur, the former stronghold of the Nazgul and Sauron himself at a time, was taken, Galadriel herself cleansing the forest by throwing down its walls and laying bare its pits. It was not only the Galadrim fighting, but elves in the north had been faced with war and evil also. The realm of Legolas's father, Thranduil, was invaded, and there the elves fought orcs in the battle under the trees in a great ruin of fire. Thranduil had the victory, and when he met Celeborn, a new era of peace had arrived, with the region being divided between Celeborn, Thranduil, and the Bjornings and Woodmen. Suddenly, with all these different regions taking part, the scale of the War of the Ring grows beyond the pages of the already epic Lord of the Rings tale. The War of the Ring was more than the struggle of Rohan and Gondor against Sauron and the lesser tyrant Saruman. It was a conflict spanning multiple kingdoms and all the creatures inhabiting the earth. Sauron, his servants, slaves and allies, set against his enemies. Men, dwarves, elves, and others fighting for their existence, Bjornings and Ents included. The war itself even ends when the hobbits save their own homeland from the fallen wizard Saruman, after the ring has already been destroyed. All play their part. This is just a short account of the many conflicts taking place across Middle-earth, as we follow the journey of those who became a part of the Fellowship of the Ring. A testament to the might threat and strength of the Dark Lord Sauron and Mordor, and 
of the strength and bravery of those who opposed him. Thanks for watching. Do you think Tolkien could have worked more of these tales from other lands into the narrative of The Lord of the Rings? Let me know your thoughts and if you see the appendices as being just as important as the text that comes before it. If you like this content, please consider subscribing if you haven't, or maybe try out some other videos on the channel. Those wishing to support on Patreon can do so by following the link in the description, or perhaps become a member of the channel through YouTube. I hope to see you on the next chapter of The Red Book.